welcome back to the Tarot Cottage. My name is Amy. I'm back today with a pick a card reading for you. Um, I want to take a moment to say hello to all of my beautiful returning subscribers. Thank you guys for coming back. I really appreciate your friendship. Um, a big welcome to everyone who stumbled across the channel for the very first time or to all of my new subscribers. Please join our family by subscribing to the channel, um, hitting your notification bell, all your like buttons. It helps me to bring you guys more content. But just a big thank you to everybody who shows up here. And as a thank you, I do offer my subscribers a chance to win a free tarot reading with me and all you have to do is drop your comment below any of my videos this month for your chance to win I am waiting to hear back from my most recent winner so congratulations to you um, be sure to hit that notification bell so that when I do drop a comment below your comment you'll be able to follow my instructions and notify me and we'll be able to get the ball rolling I do sometimes have a hard time getting my winners to reach out to me so be sure to check your comments or to check your notification system um, if you have left me comments in the past um, but for today's topic please pull up get cozy we're gonna have a little chat today because we're all friends when we gather around my table um, today's topic is all about May 2023 and your love cycles and what you can expect in May in 2023 maybe you have new people coming in maybe you're clearing out cycles but what sort of movement are you going to see in your love life in May? We do have three piles to choose from today. Pile number one with the pink quartz and the link. Pile number two with the lapis lazuli and the king of mains. And pile number three with the squeeze and the green adventurine. So whichever pile or piles are calling out to you, there may be a message waiting from spirit. I'm going to jump right into pile number one. Again, we're dealing with May love predictions for this reading. Um, May 2023, what can you expect in love? Pile one. Hello, pile number one. You were drawn to the pink quartz and to the link and this is your reading now the link in the food tarot here um, is actually corresponding to the hanged man it's this big sausage that's hanging down um, I sometimes also think about because this particular deck the food tarot does not follow the traditional rider weight system for numbering or anything like that I sometimes also think of the hermit energy with this card um, and so this is Spirit's request for you to surrender to see what's about to happen, about what's going to be revealed to you. Um, and maybe you just, <laughs> I was going to say it's the sausages, so maybe you just really love sausages. I don't know. <laughs> but let's take a look here. They just want you to surrender to what is. Maybe you have been sort of waiting around. Maybe you have been frustrated with what you've experienced in the past, especially when it comes to like divine masculine energy. Um, it's like every, it's like you keep seeing meeting the same person over and over and over again. They may have a different face, but it's the same person over and over and over again. And it's like you're just done with that recurring cycle. But what does May 2023 hold for pile number one, please, when it comes to love? We have the King of Swords. Libra, Aquarius, Gemini. We have the Two of Cups. <clears throat> Five of Swords, Three of Swords, Nine of Cups. And I, I do feel like there's a lot of conflict right this moment. Even here with the linked card, you're, I'm just looking at the steam about this fire that's been put out. It's still steaming. So there's still conflict from a past attachment or from past feelings. Um, that we're feeling constricted by because we're feeling disappointed in the very least in the present leading into May um, and we're feeling heartbroken at the very most at that high end of that spectrum and you may not even feel ready for something more it's like if it's going to be the same type of person over and over again I don't want it it's like I don't feel ready but spirit says sometimes opportunity knocks even when you're not ready and they say that it's important for us to deal with this emotion bring it up to the surface and clear it out now so that we're prepared to go into a very abundant timeline associated with this movement I just saw the Empress We have the Page of Wands. We have the King of Cups. Spirit has a plan for you. You don't realize they have a plan. We have the Knight of Wands and we have the Tower. Now, they're really kind of excited about what they are bringing in for you in May. And we're not saying that you're going to be able to 
achieve all of the goals of this new opportunity within May, of course. We only have a month. But they're saying that this is the precipice of change for you, and they're really encouraging you to surrender to it. You don't have to agree to a forever here. All you have to do is say yes to change. And that's all your guides are requesting right now. And they're not even going to force that of you. They're just, it's just a request. It's just a request. You may, And you don't feel ready. But Spirit also wants you to know that you may never feel 100% prepared for change. That's the only constant we can depend upon, but it seems to be the only thing we're really scared of is change. And so you can't really prepare yourself for this new beginning. And so you might as well just leap into it because spirit has a plan for you. And they were perhaps shutting down old cycles for you and showing you over and over and over what you didn't want so that you would have the courage and the frustration enough to push through that, that wall to break free from that cycle. And that's what this next chapter in May is going to bring in for you in love, is an opportunity to break free from that cycle. We still have to be the ones to execute the change. They're still very adamant about our involvement in our own journey. Um, but they talk about a lifeline coming through here. It's like maybe you're up in this tower and there's isolation and there's loneliness, but there's more information that they have coming in for you to help that perspective. And so they're calling you to call down your hair or to throw down your hair because they want you to offer yourself a lifeline towards new emotional starts. And it's like they're coming in to rescue you. This Knight of Wands, he's fiery, he's attractive, <laughs> coming in to rescue you. There could be fire energy coming forward for you. So Leo, Aries, Sagittarius. I am dealing with co the collective energy though. So I also have um, air energy here and I also have water energy for the Divine Masculine as well. Um, you can see with the, with the King of Cups here, he's missing a hand though. And so there's this fear of lost, a fear of lost because maybe we've lost in the past and we don't want to go through that again. But that's why they're moving you through this very abundant passage. They're trying to skirt past this conflict and usher you into the new beginning. But that's the whole point of this movement and for you to be requested to surrender to it because they're trying to get you out of this this thought prison that seems to be um, monopolizing your focus in the very least at this time. What is coming in in May, please? What can you expect in May in love? You have the Eight of Swords. Now, your prison of thought could be as a result of this air sign energy from your past. And there could have been, an, um, for someone watching, some deceit there. Like somebody could have really hurt you badly. And there's a part of you with this higher self. It's like there's going to be a part of you that really knows that this is something different. And it's your higher self coming forward here to assure you that this is something different than what you've experienced in the past. And that's why it feels so scary, <laughs> to be honest. They understand that you've been kept waiting or you feel like you've been kept waiting here. But they say that you're not being kept waiting. They're aligning you to this person. And that takes time. That takes a calibration. You know, we have to align you. It's like trying to move two buckets filled with water from one destination to the next without spilling a drop. So that takes time. To, to establish balance, to establish equilibrium. So nothing's been delaying or been delayed from you. Very strong fire aspect here with this person, but nothing's been delayed. They are just encouraging you in this next chapter to explore what becomes available to you. Explore this aspect or this new attraction that's going to pop up for you. We also have here the Hermit and we have the Empress. And you're right on track. That's what they want you to understand is that you're right on track. And everything that happens in May is going to be a reflection of that. Um, even when we're on track, we're still sometimes going to experience fear. And we're going to experience a feeling of stuckness. That is not a communication that we're not, that we're off track. It's just an implication that we are aware of the obstacle. And we're trying to find the determination to power through it. But they're trying to unravel and unlock the truth of you. You feel like you're being kept waiting. But Spirit's like, no, an opportunity has been start, has been prepared for you. And they want you to take advantage of it like that cheetah. They are also saying that this new chapter, again, surrender to it. But you can start making taking baby steps towards stability and growth perhaps after this, after this month as well. But May for you is all about happiness. It's all about levity. It's all about having fun. It's all about going out. 
and not worrying about the forever. The forever will evolve into itself. May love predictions, please. We have here isolation, and it may, makes me think of that tower energy, putting yourself isolated, locked up in a tower, whether that's physically or emotionally. And when we do that, we can it's almost like we're inflating this bigger sense of self. It's like it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger in our mind, the anxiety. And we have victim mentality coming through as well. But Spirit says there's no time for that. We don't have time for that now in May because I just heard that. It's like we don't have time for that. We don't have time to, to focus on what we've lost. All we can do is focus upon what we have to gain. And it's so much. It's so much abundance. The world. You're gaining the world. And the, the ego is represented by the dragon for me. And our higher self will often encourage us to, to do things afraid, like plant the seed, because it's very important when a squirrel plants an acorn, it can start a wondrous forest. And this is what they're leading you to. They're leading you to the passage of your transformation. They're leading you to abundance. This may be your person, perhaps, that you meet in May. For some, for others, this may just be a vessel or a vehicle to get you to a place of discernment, get you to a place of confidence, of, of happiness and joy, because you're not there yet. But it's abundance and it's movement. And that's why Spirit says it's destined for you, it's made for you, and they're encouraging you to surrender to that change that's coming in. May love predictions for pile number one, please. You have here know your worth. And that's the woo! That's the whole point of the movement and the evolution is that in the past you have perhaps had multiple experiences or multiple representations of people who didn't treat you the way that you deserve to be treated. But now it's time for you to believe in your good luck. I have a bunch on the floor that I'm going to ignore because there's tons down there. But we also have take a reality check because they're asking for a reality check that pierces through this conflict that tells us we need to self-protect, that, that we need to stay safe and in a safe zone. That's not going to get us anywhere. We need to overcome this hurdle so that we can achieve so that we can move into abundant timelines. And it's coming in the form of a beautiful relationship that your, your spirit guides say holds a very special placement when it comes to your evolution, both practical for some and spiritual for others, and some a combination of both. Ooh, I just popped right out here. They're calling in your soulmate. It's time for you to recognize that you deserve love, that you are lovable. And the people that perhaps treated you in a way that would communicate otherwise, that communicated everything about them and nothing about you in this moment. And that's what this new cycle here is offering you. We have wedding. The situation is evolving marriage. That's not going to be a message for everyone. But as I said, for someone watching, this precipice that you're jumping into in May after slow calculated steps could reach you all the way to that little tree, that tree of stability. And I always think about a little bonsai tree with that tree. And it takes a long time to, to trim a bonsai and to train it to go the way that you want. Um, so they're talking about taking your time towards the commitment. But for someone, this May could be a huge caveat towards change, towards commitment cycles. Let's get a charm bowl, please, for pile number one. Love predictions for pile number one, for May 2023. Very abundant reading for you, pile one. Great choice if you were drawn here. Page of Cups is popping up for you unexpectedly. And I feel like for someone watching, you could even be going through a period of depression or anxiety or a combination therein, um, just feeling overlooked by the universe, feeling ignored, feeling isolated. Um, they're really asking you to tap into your strength this time. They, they are saying that it's worth the effort. That's what they want you to know. And to trust your, ang not your anxiety, but to trust your intuition to guide you here. They're leading you towards divine masculine energy. We have the empress here. They're leading you towards the emperor. Um, of course, it's all energy it has nothing to do with gender, but they're talking about a strength and a protection that you can actually feel from this person. The emperor protects. He guards. He's been to war. He's been back. He knows what he's doing. And this person is not going to be like some of the ill-equipped energies that you've been dealing with in the past. Those, those people that treated you like that, that was a reflection of them. Okay. 
In the bowl today, we have the letter A. We have good. We have the butterfly. We have here loyalty. And we have a wrench in our plans, but it has the red handle, which means that we are going to be empowered by those wrenches. We have here the morning dress. And it has the huge bow on it because spirit thinks so highly of you. They want you to think highly of yourself. We have the letter E as well, which was hiding. We have here a nursing cap on a heart. So you could be a nurse or work in a hospital, perhaps. There's also a nursing the heart scape that I'm feeling through this morning period. We have angels watching over you, um, especially angels within the dynamics of your family. So you could have some family members that are have crossed over that are keeping tabs on you now. They're talking about sweet results that await you. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Don't compare yourself to other people. We have here the king of pentacles, five, maybe earth and water. We have water and earth. So um, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, or a Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. We do a Virgo here in the bowl. And we have a little stegosaurus next to the strawberry. Summertime is going to be really significant for this connection that starts in May as well. And the stegosaurus is talking about things that have been extinct Things have gone extinct, I think, of little boys. Um, and so you may have been dealing with little boys, but now you're going to be moving into this man energy. All right, pile one, that's what I have for you today. I hope it resonates with you. If it did, please drop your comment below for a chance to win a free reading with me. You can also check out my links below for Etsy for personal reading if you feel called to. But I hope that you come back here and visit me for another day at the Tarot Cottage, and I hope that you have a great day. Hello, pile two, you are drawn here to the lapis lazuli or to the king of mains. Oops, I'm trying to slip that in there. Um, and this is your reading. What can you expect in May when it comes to love cycles and your love life? So May 2023, the king of mains is associated with the king of wands in the food tarot deck here. Uh, you can see it's a great big T-bone steak. <laughs> um, and I think about temperance actually with the t-bone steak because of the giant tea and i think about finding joy in the journey and a lot of attraction like a lot of physical energy between the two of you because temperance in, immediately wants to mix together um and so there's just a lot of fire with this person so maybe you've already established something with this person um they could perhaps already be in your life so a fire energy that's in your life um there can also be a little bit of travel that maybe you'll be expected or can expect in may but let's take a look here What can you expect in May 2023 when it comes to love? Oops. We have the Nine of Pentacles and the Page of Cups. Um, they were going to come in sort of sideways. I'm going to put them upright for now. I do feel like you're going to be traveling or something in May, perhaps with this person. You know, the chariot can really speak about literal travel, but also spiritual travel that's happening here. Ace of Pentacles. The Knight of Swords. And we have the Four of Wands. I'm sorry, the Four of Pentacles. We also have the Seven of Swords here and the Three of Swords on the back of the deck. Now let's clarify this as we go forward here. What to expect in May in 2023, please, when it comes to love. There's the Ten of Swords, which is mirroring the Seven and the Three here, this Ten of Swords. The death energy. Oh my goodness. I'm getting a really strong message for someone who's already in an established relationship. And I am dealing with collective energy. So please take the messages as they resonate and leave behind those that do not feel right. Um, so I've, I've multiple energies that are coming in and multiple messages, but I do have a specific message for someone watching for someone who is already in an established relationship or, um, is seeing somebody seriously because I feel like it's nothing new. It's, it doesn't feel like a new relationship coming in. It feels like something that's established that we're trying to, it's like we're hoping there'll be something that's 
we're hoping for movement in May. I feel like you have an established trip. Maybe you're planning a trip for May and maybe you have an expectation of what's going to happen on this trip. If you're the divine feminine, you may be expecting to receive an offer. Maybe you're expecting for this person to either define your relationship more or commit in some way, maybe not physical commitment, but maybe, um, it's like we have an expectation. The divine feminine has an expectation. And the expectation is, is fueled by both your emotional desires and your want, but also on position and on timing and on this expectation of like, this is where we should be going. If we're in an established relationship and we're moving forward, it's like, I want us to be moving forward in this trajectory. I have expectations of where we're headed. And you may want a definement of that in May. But I feel like there's a travel, like an actual trip that's happening. And it could be an, a physical trip and an emotional trip for you too. We have the six of cups coming in sideways here. We do have the three of cups and the five of wands. Now I think of the three of cups as going out and having fun together. It's like going, maybe even going out in groups of people, uh, maybe traveling with groups of people. Um, I feel like if you are in a relationship, I feel like there's a lot of differences between the two of you. Maybe there are even cultural differences. And sometimes those differences in your expectations make you butt heads a little bit. Uh, sometimes you perhaps compare yourself to your friends and their relationships and what where they are at in their own journey when it comes to commitment cycles and maybe that makes you feel insecure and makes you jealous a little bit sometimes which automatically makes us want to share that our emotional despair with others we want to spread it around a little bit so sometimes we put that expectation upon our partner and we say okay well why aren't we committed yet why haven't we defined our relationship yet because what i'm really feeling from this spread for you pile two is that you have expectations or the divine feminine has expectations here when it comes to movement or progress maybe in commitment cycle some sort of offer coming in and i feel like your expectations are not going to be met now that's the first message the secondary message is that you guys aren't in an established relationship and this is your friend but you want it to be more and you want a definition or you guys are just hanging out and having fun and it's friends with benefits and you're just enjoying yourself and you want more but you don't know what they want and you expect more may is going to be very revealing for you in a lot of different ways um if you're expecting some type of offer or some type of evolution, I feel like you're going to have to be flexible with your expectations for May. We have a lot of communication in May, a lot of movement, um, but there's something about this Ace of Pentacles and about the transformation that's happening that stings a little bit because it's not happening as quickly as we want or it's not happening the way that we want. Even this Knight of Swords, he's supposed to be on horseback, he's supposed to be driving forward, he's supposed to be communicating something, and he's sitting down on the sits bath, resting, healing himself. And this is causing this cycle here, this death energy cycle, um, because this perhaps would have executed the death cycle if he had just taken action, but instead he didn't take action. And so there's an aspect of waiting for this person to say, hey, let's go out as a couple or hey, let's, you know, let's define a relationship, let's commit. And that expectation may not be matched in May. There's still a lot of abundance there's reasons to celebrate there's reasons to have fun with each other there's a lot of celebratory energy surrounding the, the three of cups and i feel like you're going to be continuing to build upon your connection build upon your friendship build upon your friends with benefits build upon this connection overall but you have to be flexible with your expectations moving forward spirit says but we're still building they're just saying that the divine feminine might be disappointed with the progress that gets made however i do feel like progress ultimately will be made perhaps in this connection because spirit's saying that that for some this is just a lesson period this delay is just a pause point it's just a lesson period that is is holding us back from our true goals here of stability and ultimately i feel like there could be the two of you moving into a state of stability or stability together but it just probably won't happen in may we're keeping things a little bit more loosey-goosey in may but i feel like that disappoints the divine feminine so spirit just wants to prepare you for that because if you're prepared for that with your expectation that's holding on to some sort of hope about something if spirit says well maybe that won't happen they're hoping that you'll be able to readjust your focus so that the wave of disappointment doesn't throw you off course and you'll be able to focus on the positive aspects of may and this relationship because i feel like there's a lot of positives to expect you guys are going to be going out and having fun i feel like you'll be traveling perhaps for some together as well and they want you to focus on that they also want you to know that um 
self-respect, self-love is very, very attractive too. And they want you to claim that independent spirit. Because when we're trying to communicate to another being that we're enough, sometimes we just have to hold those firm boundaries of I am enough and I believe that and I'm not going to be shaken by what you do or do not do. I'm going to split this like this, even though they're in a state of limbo <clears throat> for offering us what we want. It's like you feel like you're at a crossroads and they don't feel like they're at that crossroads yet. <laughs> we have here a step up and lead. So in May, if you're waiting for this friend, if you're waiting for a partner, current partner to level up a bit, um, you're going to be waiting. <laughs> um, they're going to be passive when it comes to creating a lot of change. So you have to be flexible with your expectations, but that doesn't stop you from communicating what you want. It doesn't necessarily equate to the person being able to step towards you and giving you what you want, but there's nothing stopping you for asking. We also have your shine. They want you to focus on positive aspects. It says cool your emotions because they're are worried that you're going to be really disappointed. Even though there's going to be lots of reasons to celebrate, um, they just feel like your expectations might thrust you onto this beach. It's like all of my desires, all of my truths within this connection, within this friendship, again, could be a friendship with benefits, could be a relationship that started. Um, all of your expectations um, are coming from within your heart space. It's not, it's not another person's responsibility to follow through on our expectations. So it says, keep your heart open during this process. Claim your independence during this period. And you can even see with the willow tree or the willow basket, um, the basket's still being woven. You just need a little bit of flexibility in creating that basket. And if we take our time to build upon this foundation, it's going to be able to hold, this basket's going to be able to hold a lot more abundance. We have earth pulsing, pulse of mother nature, slow down in time and nature. And I feel like that's exactly what you can expect <laughs> um, is temperance, <laughs> slow moving energy and just finding joy together, just having fun together. Knowing that that's a temporary energy as well, and that we're going to see evolution. We have here the void. Stop, embrace winter, and the great cosmic womb, and lifting the veil, questioning everything, anything aligned must go. And in this moment, the Ten of Swords is asking us to let go of the stinging energy, of the disappointment here. Um, and to not be too anxious to leap into forever or leap into tomorrow, um, because they want you to stop and embrace this moment, embrace May, embrace the the celebratory energy that the Three of Cups can really represent. Oops, I'm gonna put one of those. May 2023 love predictions, please, for pile number two. What to expect in May for pile number two. You have here very soon. Clearly decide what you want so that it comes to you now. And that, as I said, just because May seems to be a little bit disappointing disappointing in what you feel like could happen or the movement that you feel could happen or the evolution you feel like could happen, it doesn't mean that you won't ultimately achieve your goals there. That's why they're asking you to just be flexible in your expectations, in your plans, and in your, in your um, outcome. We have the wedding. The situation involves marriage. <laughs> Now, sometimes I think about marriage and I think about the Nine of Pentacles and I think about evolution. The three, the Four of Pentacles can lead us to the Ten of Pentacles. We just have to build upon it. We also have here heart-to-heart -heart conversations are needed. It's time to honestly discuss your feelings with each other and keep an open mind. Your soulmate may differ from your usual type and your expectations. And they may differ from your expectations. That's the biggest crux of this message. But that doesn't mean that you can't reach your ultimate goal here overall. Just maybe not in May. They just want you to enjoy May. Have fun. Don't compare yourself to others in May. Advice, please, for pile number two in the bowl. Knight of Wands, take action. Fire energy, Leo, Aries, Sagittarius for May. We have the Four of Swords and we have the Ten of Pentacles. Reverse. Now, the Ten of Pentacles reverse is a lack of, of commitment or a lack of security. Sometimes it talks about foreclosures or divorces or things of that nature. And if that has nothing to do with your scenario, please leave that aside. Um, in this case, I feel like it's a lack of 
commitments um, that you may not experience in May. So you may not experience commitment cycles in May, but they're still encouraging you to embrace that. It's just a pause point. It's not a forever energy with the Four of Swords. It's perhaps a painful reality or something that stings you in May because you're anxious for that. But the Knight of Wands doesn't worry or doesn't concern himself with, with the forevers or the what's going to happen. So he just goes for it. And that's your advice from your guides at this time. Oh, I'm gonna go Ooh, it could be a friends with benefits situation. We have here beauty. We have love on a foundation flipped over. So I do think about um, commitment cycles, maybe not commitment cycles yet. We do have forever friends here with the puzzle piece. We have A and X and we have loyalty with the teacup. I think about resting and I think about friendship. We have here Divine Feminine Energy, feeling disappointed, maybe blue. We have Cancer Energy, and they want you to look at things from a higher perspective because it can still transition you into peace. This connection can still be a vesicle, a vesicle, <laughs> a vehicle or a vessel for peace. Then we have I Love You Infinity. All right, pile number two, that's what I have for you today. I hope it resonates with you. If it does, please drop your comment below for a chance to win a free reading with me. You can also check out my link for Etsy for a personal reading if you feel called to. But I hope you come and visit me at the Tarot Cottage, and I hope you have a great day. Hello, pile number three. You are drawn to the green adventurine and to the squeeze, and this is your reading. What can you expect in May 2023 when it comes to love? Now, the squeeze here is actually the Six of Cups. Um... And I love the Six of Cups. It's my favorite card in the whole deck. But the, the orange, I think of a, about a zest of life or a, a zest of life. <laughs> um, and so I think about reunions, actually, friendship energy. So you may find that there could be an aspect of friendship. Maybe there's a flirtation or a situationship with a friend that's kind of confusing right now. So you may find that that is a major theme in May for you in love. This could also mean that somebody from a past life is coming forward or somebody from this lifetime from your past may come forward in May or you may be spending a lot of time with someone of that effect in May as well. So let's take a look. What I love about the Six of Cups is that it's very collaborative. There's a lot of generosity between the two of you. And there's a real emotional connection, perhaps, between the two of you as well that we can anticipate. What can pile number three expect in love in May 2023, please? For someone, it might even be clarity over a friend's feelings. We have the Knight of Pentacles. The Chariot. <clears throat> the Eight of Swords. What is happening in love in May for 2023 for pile number three, please? The Three of Wands. And we have the Wheel of Fortune. Back of the deck, we have the Six of Pentacles. And we do have the King of Cups. And I want to clarify this as I go forward here. We have a turn of events in your favor in a situation that perhaps you've been, been slow to... Maybe you've seen a lot of a lack of movement or no movement, um, but then we have sudden momentum. What is that in the please? We have the Four of Swords. There's a feeling of helplessness that's leading up to this connection in May. I see some advancement coming in. And again, it could be in a connection to a friendship or a friends with benefits energy. But I feel like it's been, there's been no revelations because somebody thinks it's helpless or they, they are helpless or they feel helpless to create revelations. Truly, it's just a lack of strength. You have the high priestess. We have the Knight of Coins. There's somebody in your life that you rely on, that you really are dependent upon, almost 
Um, and it's a reality that sort of stings about this connection because I feel like it's very nostalgic in nature. I feel like it could be an established friendship. Um, and there's desire for movement. There's a lot of emotion here, but we feel stuck in a prison that we put ourselves in because we, we felt helpless. Maybe this person felt helpless, but I feel like somebody's coming forward with an offer for you, someone that you know, someone that you trust. I just saw the Wheel of Fortune again. And there, the turn of events that they push, the fact that they bring forward an offer and push their wheel forward actually gets your wheel in motion too when it comes to this connection. Now this is the tattoo tarot. So this person could actually have tattoos actually because I was just focused on his neck tattoo. We have the Nine of Swords. And we have the King of Swords. Now this person... They're coming forward with communication for you. So I feel like May is going to be a heavy communication month for you, Pile 3. We have the Queen of Swords having to make a decision about what this person wields forward. Because I feel like you have somebody that you already know that's established in your life in some way. And this could be a connection to the work realm too. It could be a friendship within the work realm. But you have someone that you're already trusting or that you already have an established relationship with in some form that's coming forward to reveal themselves to you. Um, they could reveal themselves to you in words or actions, to be honest, because I feel like that's coming in for, that's different energies that are coming in for the collective. Um, but there's somebody who is trying to build up the courage to reveal something to you. And I feel like it's really them trying to build up the courage because they've been trying to build up the courage for quite some time. But they are saying that the Queen of Swords is going to have a decision to make in May about whether or not she wants to push that wheel forward as well, whether or not she wants to advance. The chariot's talking about being pulled in different directions, um, and so choice is gonna be a part of May for you, for the Divine Feminine. But this person, it, he's holding on to this coin, it's holding on to this diamond. And to be honest with you, I feel like this person is a really good person, really smart person. Um, and I almost feel like they don't think these things of themselves, like they're just reliable, they're just a good person. And so it could be a very good turn of events in your favor if you choose to participate in the situation. Um, you can even see on the card, the squeeze, it says pulp, question mark, because you're going, and then it says vitamin C. And when I think of vitamin C, I think of clarity, I think of the sun. Um, and so revelations are coming in for you in May, pile three. And I feel like it's somebody from your past or a friend that's already established right now who wants to be generous with you and who perhaps has been very generous with you in the past. But they are be there's a leadership role that I feel with this person. They could be a teacher or something, maybe even work in the law field. But the King of Swords is just the leader of communication. So if you do work with them, there could be a teaching element. So take that as it resonates. That's just for someone specific. Um, but there's revelations coming, and then you get to decide which path you want to take that revelation for the Divine Feminine. We have here Find a Balance. It's coming in reverse, the full moon in Libra. And there is an emphasis on Libra energy. I've, this person in the past may have felt overlooked by you. You have here know that you're loved and that's what's going to happen for you in May, Pile 3, is that someone's going to make you know something about their feelings for you. They're going to make you know that you are cared for and it's New Moon and Libra again. The Divine Feminine could be a Libra as well. Keep your heart open, First Quarter Moon and Libra. And then we have Release Control on the back of the deck. Sometimes the Queen of Swords can be a very discerning and intimidating character. <laughs> They're asking you to lead from the heart space because that's what you're going to have to do in order to um, respond in kind to this person because they're coming forward with something emotional. It doesn't necessarily feel like a complete offer. It just feels like a revelation though. So there could be things that get in the way. We have lost lands. You've done this before. Past life connection. And that perhaps why you built an instant rapport with this person or why um, the two of you have sort of remained friends or been friends or are friendly with each other, especially if it's a work connection. The reason why you felt so instinct instinctively connected to them is because this is a path, past life contract. We have lifting the veil. Anything unaligned must go. 
and loosen your grip. It says coping mechanisms, density, addiction, and let God in. Whenever I think of this card, I think of the tower and I think about revelations and we can't go back after the revelations that are coming in in May. So this person's coming forward to lift the veil of confusion so that you can have the true focus to be able to make a decision about whether or not you want to include yourself. What can you expect in May 2023, please, when it comes to love? We have here, let go of control issues. They keep asking you to release, to surrender to it. Lead with an open heart space because maybe you're the type of person that's very discerning and very, um, and we always encourage that to be very discerning. But maybe you're, you, your discernment is being flooded by your own sense of insecurity and you overthink the situation which prohibits any type of growth. So don't fall into bad habits. We have soulmate. That, yes, this is your soulmate. And I'm just focusing on those pillars of justice in the background. So I do think about clarity and I think about a voice. So somebody's speaking to you. So there's going to be lots of communication and lots of chemistry that perhaps we're going to go exploring. It says there is a strong magnetic attraction already present. And back of the deck says release your ex coming in reverse. Um, the time has come to clear your energy on the back of that deck. What can pile number three expect in love in 2023 may please you have here trust you need to have trust in a relationship in order for it to flourish and that's the thing with the knight of coins he's come up multiple times i feel very trustworthy energy coming from this person it could be that they really lead from a place of integrity um and that could be why they have a difficult time revealing themselves to you because it could perhaps get in the way of that integrity in some way and that's not for everyone please take that as it resonates your soul is preparing to reconnect it's time to trust the process they keep asking you to let go of control trust the process um, surrender to the divine your strengths and weaknesses are going to be tested in may when it comes to your love cycles and that's why they're anticipating that the divine feminine has some choices and decisions to make and she's not afraid to make those decisions based on her highest good um, and so Spirit is encouraging you to do that as well. Let's get a charm ball, please, for pile number three. Advice for pile number three when it comes to love and the bowl, please. Nine of Cups. I feel like you're going to feel kind of smug in your position when this person comes up to reveal themselves. It's like maybe you've already sort of known or you've always known that they feel this way, but it's going to make you feel good. It's going to boost your ego here. And I just heard trophy wife, so it's like feeling like you're up on a pedestal. We have the nine of wands. We also have the eight of cups. Um, the nine of wands is about frustration and holding back. Um, and then we have this nine of cups and the eight of cups. Now the eight of cups is moving on, moving out of unfulfilling cycles and having a choice to make perhaps. And so the divine feminine here might have to decide to which she might have a decision to make in which arena she wants to head into if she already has commitments, for instance. Um, and this is coming up in a sideways angle too. Everything's in a state of limbo because it's contingent on your decision on which path this is going to take. Are you going to hold back? Or are you going to move into a new abundant timeline with this person? Now there could be practical, practical concerns that we have to rifle through depending on those choices. And they're saying, you know, with each choice that we make, we have to choose the level of hard that we're willing to cope with. We have the letter P here. We do have an engagement ring and we have the Knight of Coins coming forward with a diamond ring. So moving into new levels of engagement, wanting to level up this relationship, perhaps from a friendship into something more, but an offer coming in. There could be commitment cycles already in place because we do have the Tree of Life and we have the slow hand saw. So that could be part of the practical concerns and why this person has held back so long. Um, we have here the Divine Feminine in a shade of gray. I think of Hermit Energy, so Virgo, and having to retreat to make a decision but which path they want to move forward on. Blank canvas, so creative accountability with a temptation. So you are either the temptation or you're being tempted into another realm. Maybe both, actually. Star of Aquarius, healing energy, release. Commitment cycles for the Divine Feminine. And we have the Seven of Cups, so confusion. Um, but confusion being 
eradicated. Like I feel like there's going to be revelations here between uh, a connection that's already in place that there's a lot of confusion or fantasy surrounding. This person might fantasize about you already. All right, Pile 3, that's what I have for you today. I hope it resonates with you. If it did, please drop me a comment below um, for your chance to win a free reading with me. Um, you can also check out my links below for Etsy for a personal reading if you feel called to. Um, and I just hope that you come back and visit me on another day at the Tarot Cottage, and I hope you have a great day.